In a lot of ways, unfortunately, what happened last night could not have been worse for this country, for our children, for our grandchildren, for our future. The outcome of our presidential election was seized from the hands of voters, where, of course, it rightly belongs, and now resides in the control of lawyers and courts and highly partisan, clearly corrupt big city bureaucrats. So no matter what happens next, that is a tragedy. Many Americans will never again accept the results of a presidential election. That story is still unfolding tonight, obviously, and we're going to follow it as honestly as we can wherever it leads. We'll begin with that in just a minute. But first, we want to acknowledge the good news. And believe it or not, there is some good news, regardless of everything else that has happened. And here it is. America remains. It's still here. That's the first and most important thing. And it's not a foregone conclusion. We almost lost it. Democrats told us they wanted to beat Donald Trump. They spent more money than anyone ever has in any election in history to do that. But there was a lot more going on. Democrats didn't harness the full power of big tech and the billionaire class simply to make Joe Biden president. No. What they really wanted was total control over everything. No more democracy, no more dissent, permanent obedience from the rest of us. And they came shockingly close to getting that. If Democrats had won the White House and the Senate last night, the country as we know it would have ended. Not because Democrats have bad ideas, though they do but because Democrats plan to impose an entirely new system on our country, not an agenda, a system. With nothing to check their power, the left fully intended to eliminate the traditional American balances within our government, along with the Constitution and the Bill of Rights that constrain their power. We're not overstating this. Joe Biden's party planned to turn our highest court into a partisan political weapon. They admitted that. They wrote magazine articles about how they planned to do it. Then they planned to pack the Congress of the United States, a legislative branch, by adding new states to our union, purely for the Senate seats. We're not speculating there either. They admitted that too. Then they planned to pack the electorate itself, the ultimate corruption in a democracy. 20 million foreign nationals added to our voter rolls overnight. That was their agenda. How would any of that improve the United States of America? Well, they never claimed that it would. Making this country better was never the point. The point was to create a permanent democratic majority, a one-party state with complete control over the population. Never in our history has any mainstream political party proposed an agenda more radical than this. They didn't talk about it much. There's a reason for that, of course. They didn't want to scare you. But it was entirely real. And last night, it came very close to happening. We should all be deeply grateful that it didn't. We're telling you this because we want to be clear about the stakes involved. This isn't a matter of opinions and a difference between those opinions. This isn't about policy. It's about the system that all of us live under, that governs this country. That's what's at stake. So keep that in mind as we move forward. And now to the rest of the day's news. We want to start with an overview of all that we have just seen. And we can't think of anyone better to provide that overview than Professor Victor Davis Hansen, who joins us now. Professor, thanks so much for coming on. Thank so you. where do you think we are right now? I think I'm really worried like you are. I mean, a, a constitutional republic, Tucker, relies more on just laws. It has protocols and good faith traditions. We've been told for three months that this was going to be a landslide. That was with the media mantra every day. This is a media right. that the Shorenstein Center said is 93% biased. So here we are tonight, 600,000 uncounted votes in Maricopa, a red county, mostly in Arizona. And we don't even know, have any idea except that Donald Trump has a lead in Pennsylvania and the media told us that this could not happen. And they did that, why? Did they do it so we would be get information, so we'd be better sit citizens? No, they did it to gin up enthusiasm for one candidate and to decrease momentum for the other. And then we heard last night that Arizona was in the bag, it's all done, and, the, and people called that state before they did Texas and Florida in some cases. And then we go to the pollsters and we think, well, they learned their lesson in 2016, that all of their pseudoscientific 90.6 or 84.2 accurate, that was all over with. They were completely discredited. They came back and by September 
Uh, the guru Nate Silver was saying 89% chance of, of a Biden victory, and we were told landslide. And so then we turn on their televisions, and what, what do we learn? They're completely discredited again, but they did set a narrative. So now we're bewildered, we're losing faith in our political institutions, and they're culpable because they conditioned the electorate to think that what was very likely and probable was absolutely impossible. And when you add into this big media and big pollster mix, this cartel, you mix big tech. So the President of the United States has legitimate reasons to worry about the sanctity of this election. And then we have a private entity, a Twitter CEO says that you have to be warned about what the President says when he uses Twitter. Or people throughout this campaign have been deplatformed and canceled. And people are saying, you know what? That, that's our property, we can do what I want. we want. And then we have the big banks. So they're targeting individual senators, $100 million for races. I mean, Mitch McConnell was going to win no matter what. But what was the purpose of that? It was to send a message. We have unlimited resources. And if you want to get on TV and be a point man for judicial confirmations or Kavanaugh hearings, we're going to go after you. And we're going to tell everybody else, if you get on our side, we're going to really go after you in a Senate race and bankrupt you or make your life miserable. So I'm really worried because when you add into that mix, big media, big tech, big banks, and these big pollsters, it, it, it's this bi-coastal, we get back to the same thing, this bi-coastal privileged elite who have no idea what's going on in the interior of the country, but fear it very greatly. In this election, Tucker, it was a story between academia, Hollywood, celebrities, Silicon Valley, the media, the big banks, Wall Street, and who did Donald Trump have on his side? He had those people at the rallies. He had an outreach to minorities. He had talk radio, and that's about it. And so I'm very worried that a lot of people are gaining and using inordinate influence in a way that's really warping a constitutional system that's worked really well for 233 years. So why can't we just take a deep breath, not call these states before we know the decision, and let the people decide? And that's not what they want. It's landslide, landslide, landslide. And then when you don't get a landslide, it's, oh, you're, you won't concede. Well, you won't concede because the votes haven't been counted. But they precondition the viewers not to accept that. And so it's very dangerous what they're doing. It's got a bad, hist it's got a bad history in totalitarian societies when the media and pollsters and technology and utilities do what they're doing. And yet... I can't help, and I'm looking for a bright spot here, and I think there is one, in the face of all of that, more power arrayed on one side of a political contest maybe than ever, ever in the history of democracy. Ever, ever. Tens of millions of people resisted. Absolutely. I mean, here we are sitting tonight, and it looks like the Republicans have a good chance of keeping the Senate. They picked up seats in the House where we told that would be impossible. And there's a, there is a pathway for Donald Trump to win the presidency. And they had none of the help of any of these, of these warped institutions that the left relied on. And, and what the bottom line of the subtext is, the left doesn't have 51% approval of the people. The people are not right. with them, and they use all of these other levers to uh, condition a pre-desired result, but they don't have the people. That's pretty clear. Victor Davis Hanson, I appreciate that. Great to see you tonight. Thank you.